do you need to be the next Renee Fleming? No, but do you want to enjoy it and have a creative outlet? Sure, it's a great option. So Hi everybody, my name is Aubrey and I'm an opera singer and a voice coach. I've been getting a lot of requests to talk about different voices that are in the public eye. For example, today we're going to be talking a little bit about Britney Spears. Here is a video when she's pretty darn young. She looks like she's at some sort of competition or a televised performance. And yeah, let's see how this sounds. Here's another one. A little bit loud, sorry. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So, we're going to talk a little bit about those. She looks very young here. I definitely don't usually teach my youngest students to be belting or do anything too crazy because you got time, don't worry about it. And besides, you know, we want to make sure that we're teaching really good technique from a young age. She's singing with, it seems to be a lot of joy. I like it uh, when we inspire young people to find a love for music. Do you need to be the next Renee Fleming? No, but do you want to enjoy it and have a creative outlet? Sure, it's a great option. These performances remind me a lot of those 1950s and 1960s televised performances where the singers are on a stage and they've got a full orchestra behind them and it's like this really grand event and it's super fun. The color she's getting is big, it's uh, dark, it's kind of traditional Broadway. It's uh, pulled upwards but still maintaining that forward momentum that is very reminiscent of a belt. I can definitely understand that applause. She's she's really getting into it and definitely encouraging the audience to join her in the uh, experience, which is a very cool thing. And I enjoy listening to it. So here she looks preteen, teen, early. So what's interesting about this is I'm hearing a bit of like a Shakira pullback, you know, like that yeah, 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 kind of covered in the back of the throat kind of thing. And it's kind of fun to hear that, you know, it's clear that she's playing with different styles and different colors so she can find out her own, which I also encourage. We should be absolutely exploring every opportunity that we have with our voice because you never know what style is going to click and what's going to help you express the best. And that's always what I'm looking for, at least when I'm performing. So there's that pulling that, the things that you do for me. I feel like it's a style that's kind of associated with a more mature sound, whether correctly or incorrectly. Um, it's kind of fun, it's covered. Things you do. It kind of pulls back. I feel like when I'm making this color, I'm compressing everything a little bit in the back of the throat up against the soft palette. Things you do. Things you do. It's not a huge space up here. It's kind of a little bit more of a bigger space back here. And I feel like it's kind of pressing it with my tongue. Things you do. And I, it kind of gives you that big round kind of performance quality color. So this looks like a, a wedding. Interesting. So this looks like a, a home video of a wedding and, and she's just performing for that. And it looks like she's also being interviewed at the moment. She's in a little box on the corner and somebody pulled up this video so she could react to it. Uh, what's happening here that's kind of interesting is this huge color that she's getting from letting her lip kind of sag a little bit. And it's just kind of coming, you're, you're singing more from the throat and I'm definitely allowing a little bit of the air to move up towards the nose and I'm not really engaging much of the top lip. Uh, 
and it kind of just feels like the air is brushing the top of my soft palette before getting out and I'm not really adjusting very much in terms of where the vowels are coming out of. And when you watch this video, I will link all the videos below so people can watch them on their own. You can see a bit of a pulling. This is also kind of uh, reminiscent of the direction that she will be going in her future years as a singer. So if we just truncate a little bit of that depth that she's getting, you can hear it slowly getting more nasal and small. It kind of sits in the same spot. All we're doing is kind of cutting off those lower sounds that she's getting from that chest or that resonation that she gets to. Sounds like Christina Aguilera. Hmm. So, uh, it's funny because it's like, love me, right? That love me. It's sitting in the same spot as that previous video that we just mentioned where there's not a lot of upper lip movement, but a lot of depth and that kind of gives you that color. We're also starting to hear that traditional Britney Spears sound, right? It's starting to come in. But at the same time, this is super, super similar to stuff that I swear I have heard in the late 90s, early 2000s, right? It reminds me a lot of Christina Aguilera. It reminds me a lot of these, these female artists from the time. So it's possible that she's using that baby voice, which people like to call, as her calling card to separate herself from other singers around this time period. Um, whether or not she chose to do that or was encouraged to do that, I can't really speak on it. But I can tell you that it is definitely a way for her to separate herself from her colleagues. Take that as you will. Cool. So that reminds me a lot of like a Dolly Parton-y kind of sound. It's very like, don't you know? It's very showy, very exciting, very full. I feel like some people would probably sing that with a little bit more warmth. Don't you know? But I feel like her color here keeps it very forward. It's very performance friendly. It's very bright. It cuts through the rest of the textures underneath going on with like, you know, the, the drums and, and stuff like that. So it definitely allows her to stand out as a vocalist. So definitely a cool color, not completely reminiscent of what she is famous for, but again, the voice is extremely dynamic. It is about as dynamic as we are as people. So, you know, exploring in our youth what kinds of colors we like, and then as we get older, learning how to adapt as well is super, super important. I feel like singers are very special because our instruments grow with us. So every couple of years, our voices will change and age, and we thusly have to relearn how to have a relationship with our voice. And sometimes we explore whole new sonic realms, like different opportunities that you couldn't sing before because it was too high, too low, too gritty, too whatever. And now all of a sudden you have access to these fascinating things, you know? And I think that's what keeps me super interested in singing all the time is the fact that in a couple of years, what I'm singing right now, might not be as comfortable, but something completely new will be. So I can't really get bored, you know? And I, I do think that watching Britney Spears in this, you know, very young kid to, you know, early to late teens is kind of cool to watch her explore with what she she's interested in, in terms of her own voice. This is a really cool clip too. It says it was uploaded December 2nd of 2017. I don't really know when it was taken or the actual context around it, but it's Britney in her house, I assume, or somebody's house and it's very beautiful. And she's singing, can't help falling in love with you. That's a pretty color. There's a lot of fry. With you. Lots of fry on sets, which is kind of cool. Um, That reminds me a lot of like Britney's famous stuff, right? I 
right? That onset is kind of fry and crackly. Um, fry being, uh, wise men say, right? You can use that as a technique to kind of separate yourself. I do really love that low note she gets. It's really pretty. I, I think that sounds really full and rich and warm. What's funny is it's not particularly connected to the rest of the stuff she's singing. The rest of the content is a little bit in that nasal frontal kind of position, but that particular low note sits pretty deeply in the chest. And I would love for her to kind of foster that sound because it was very rich and warm. Hopefully I can hear that in the future a little bit more because she has a wonderful low register and I feel like I don't necessarily associate her with that. So, you know, kind of fun. A little bit of fun surprise. <laughs> So right there, is very, very forward in the face. And she was having spots where she was singing A and A ah sounds a little bit very flat. You could almost see her tongue flattening against her teeth. That kind of traditional Britney Spears sound, right, is coming from that flat tongue position almost. It's, it's just kind of, it keeps everything very, uh, like, it keeps everything very pointed sounding. To me, it almost sounds like it's rectangular. It's got a very, very clean delineation of sound. So that kind of positioning is, is kind of specific to her. So this is like that light Britney Spears voice that is coming in. It kind of just sits forward. It's very small. There's not a lot of depth. So if I slow it down, it sounds like this. And I try. I'm not opening very much. I'm creating a very, very small spot. The tongue is kind of up. And I try. But it's very similar to how she was singing her belts as a child. And I try. And the difference is we've just truncated, like I said earlier, those lower notes. And I try. It sits in the nose instead of that bigger, beltier, Broadway kind of sound. And I try. Right? So it's just a change in position. I say the vowel I, like an I. I. And then that I creates the foundation for the position that I want to sing in when I'm trying to emulate her sound. I, I. And I try. Like how I tend to teach people to use the schwa, which is that upside down E, I am using an I as my bass vowel. What I mean by that is a vowel bass to me is when I think of, in this case, the I sound and kind of reshape everything to come originally from that. So even though and I try doesn't have an I sound in it, I kind of position and I try, and I try. I'm thinking it the whole time. And that allows me to go, and I try. That kind of gives me that specific color. So as a contrast, when I'm usually singing, I think a schwa, that upside down E. And that's the neutral uh sound. And I try. So everything I sing comes from this idea of thinking schwa in the back of my head. So you can technically do this with any vowel, whatever it fits best for you. I tend to pick schwa because I like the neutral position for a lot of things, but she's kind of having this basis of an I vowel. And that gives you that traditional Britney sound that she's super famous for. The next thing that people often talk about when they're talking about Britney is the fact that she is famous for lip syncing. I can just put it out there that as a singer, I do not move very much when I'm doing any live performances because I just can't. I like to run and I feel like I'm a relatively fit person, but as soon as I'm starting to sing, I definitely need all the air I can get. I don't really have enough extra air to be moving around very much, and I ne I can totally tell if I'm getting a little too excited at a friend's karaoke party that I'm moving too much because immediately I start getting out of breath and my singing voice suffers as a result. So lip syncing makes a lot of sense for people who are very, very visual artists as well. In her case, she's a great dancer. So, you know, you wanna have a marriage and lip syncing allows you to do that. 
it's still her singing. She's just singing in a position that's more acceptable, right? She's not necessarily dancing in the recording booth. But here you can still see her killer moves while also being able to listen to her voice. So personally, I've never really had a problem with lip syncing. And I've heard all the stories about why you shouldn't lip sync. I, I don't know. I mean, she's a great dancer. To me, that's kind of how I know her um, because that's what I used to watch her do. And so for me, if, if Britney was just standing and singing like you would in a Handel opera, I feel like I would kind of miss out on an opportunity to watch her show other skills she has. I'm of the camp that people should just do what they like best. You know, everyone should feel as comfortable as possible on their stage. And if you're feeling stressed out about trying to perform, right? You're trying to make sure you give the, get the best performance possible, right? I can hear the voice. She sounds really great in the recordings. She looks really great when she's dancing because her moves are so much better than mine will ever be. Um, and I think that's fine, you know? If that's what she wants is her performance, that's fine by me. And I think one other thing that I'd like to mention is that different sounds are not inherently bad in the voice. Having a lot of different tools in your toolbox to choose from in order to access different styles and genres and colors is not a bad thing. I think it's a really good thing because it doesn't allow you to pigeonhole yourself in any one sound, right? You can go and sing Broadway or opera or metal scream or pop music or anything you want because you have a familiarity with your voice that hopefully allows you to play, right? Have a lot of fun with it. So I think that I hear a lot of people discussing change in a, in a singer's voice as a bad thing. And I feel like that's not necessarily true. It's why people change that can sometimes be a little bit more nefarious than others. But we age. Age is natural and our voices change. That can be a whole discussion video at some other point. Uh, but age is a good thing, it's a natural thing, and we shouldn't shame singers for aging. We also should talk about freedom of choosing different styles. You don't have to do the same thing forever. Just because you're famous for one style doesn't mean you don't have other interests. So personally, I feel like it's a good thing when people start exploring styles after they've been in one style for so long. That's not a bad thing either. But if you are having a discussion about why people make decisions, right? Having options vocally and being able to choose when to use them is one thing, and not being able to choose is a completely different thing. Feeling pressured to make decisions or kind of being forced into what I mentioned before, a pigeonhole, and that's all you can do is a bummer. Uh, and I think that's a conversation that I'm not gonna get into on this, but I will bring up the point that uh, for the sake of Britney Spears and other artists too, I don't necessarily want the discussion to circle around the fact that they've changed uh, because change is natural and changing up styles and sounds is natural but what might not be natural might be happening in the industry as a whole so i'll just leave it there like i've mentioned before feel free to like subscribe comment open up a discussion with me about things you liked, what I could do better. If you're interested in taking lessons, click the link and reach out or send me an email. I would love to work with you guys. And uh, all in all, I look forward to seeing you again soon. All right, see you. What is